Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Have here a Fiat Talento to look at. So, as usual, this is a rebadged Renault Traffic. It's also known as a Vauxhall Vivaro or a Nissan NV300. This has done 65,000 miles. Okay, we're gonna start it up. Bit of a slow starter. Bit of a lazy starter, sounds like. A little bit of a rattle from the chain. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but very common on these. Check injection system is what we've got, and a spanner like there. We'll just press this and see if there's any other. Sometimes it can also say check anti-pollution system. Go through that. See the temperature sensor is reading. Okay, I've got a new scan tool here to use. It's the X431 Euro from Launch. And I've picked this up from Launch UK. Uh, we're gonna do intelligent diagnose. Got a choice of automotive or heavy duty. I'm just gonna do a automatic scan on it. So this is the X431 Euro now, this one. It's the uh, newer model to the Euro Tab 3, which I had. Just go through it. Year 2016. If I identified wrong, blah blah. blah. Probably mentioned before on my videos that if I was looking at working out one of these vans I'd prefer to just work on a Renault because they're a little bit easier um, we'll probably see that now we're gonna get some weird fault codes up when usually when you go in as a Fiat or a Vauxhall it will give you completely different fault codes and you've got no idea what it means so I always like to scan them as whatever they are so this one's a Fiat we'll scan it as a Fiat P009564 pending uh, boost code I think right, we're going to go back from that and we'll go to local diagnose we'll search this as a Renault which is what the ECU actually is, it's a Renault ECU so we might get a better description as a Renault system See there it comes up now as the traffic Renault Traffic 3. Oh, high speed scan. It can take a bit longer to find these because when it's looking for a module that's not there it takes a bit longer to try and find it before it gives up so then it turns grey that means they're not fitted uh, transponder what else have we got ECM air temperature sensor circuit implausible signal ok we're going to enter that uh, it's my first time using this now so let me just go back we've got over here option for Google search you can see there I've done some videos on that before and I'll traffic 009564 009564 it's the same fault code um, yeah so I'm pretty common it's a pretty common fault something I've seen quite a lot uh, right let's go slide that back across there we go Right, so I'm still getting the hang of this, like I said. Let's enter that again. Read the DTC. What is that one? I don't know what that does. Oh, it's the workshop data. I need to set that up. Right. I'm going to go to look at live data. And see if we can see what, what looks out of place, really. in the In regards to the air temperatures. We search air in 
air manifold air temperature, low pressure EGR temperature. Uh, temp. Let's see, is there anything else that says temperature? Internal temperature sensor. Sometimes you you think you've found all of the relevant PIDs, but if you search in stuff like ambient temperature or whatever else, you might find something else come up. So I think we've found everything that we can look at there. Manifold temperature 20 degrees. Inlet air temperature 36 degrees. Let's turn the engine off. The ignition on. So that one looks a bit higher than I'd expect to see it, I think. What we're going to do is see if we can get a hold of a sensor and swap swap that over. So I've got a lot of spares in here of these type of sensors, but I don't think I've got the right one, so we might have to order one. Uh, we've got another box of sensors here, and I think that is the right one that we're looking for. Okay, so we're looking at the engine here. We're going to tap that to the side. Looks like that's had a sensor not too long ago. Okay, so I've actually got two sensors here. Part number on that one. Slightly different numbers on them. Let's just unplug this. Let's see what we're reading up here now. So that hasn't made any difference there in the inlet air temperature. But these can also run from the airflow meter. 25 degrees, that's exactly what we are at the minute. It's around about 22 degrees, I think. So it's close. That's a lot better. So it looks like the manifold temperature sensor is actually working. I think this needs an airflow sensor actually, this one. So I've used contact cleaner on the air mass sensor, which has brought it down to sort of 28 degrees. But I think we're still gonna just swap it over. Okay, so just to get a better understanding of the system, I've went in now as Opal system. Obviously we've been unplugging stuff, so we're gonna have a few extra codes here, but you see on the Opal system, it will give you intake air temperature sensor one and two. So it can help you sort of narrow down what sensor is actually giving us default. So we had the P0095 sensor 2 and sensor 2, that was the original codes that we had. So if we go into the, we don't want to clear the fault code, we want to go to data stream and look for induction data, should be there. Intake air temperature and 1 and 2. So it's a lot more clear, see some different systems on these. Is, just works better. Intake air temperature sensor 1, intake air temperature sensor 2. So we have, let's go back out to the sensors now. Okay, so the, the, yeah, the bonnet is open, so the sun is shining on these sensors. We might get slightly different reading, so let's have a look. Let's see if we can get a clear, clear view of that screen. 32 degrees, which is going to be this one. Can you just unplug that? I've got one hand. Sure. This one. minute and take temperature sensor one that is here so plug that back in all right now intake air temperature sensor number two it's down here that's reading 50 degrees let's unplug that Not made any difference. So we can see with the original sensor that's pulling down to two volts. If we swap over a new sensor, plug that on there. It's two points. Let's give it a second to see if it sort of levels out. Okay, so we're not getting no movement on this 50 degree reading. What I'm gonna do is sometimes if you go back and clear the fall code, it will sort of try and re 
rework the sensor basically. The sensor will come back on come back on. Uh how do we clear the fault code clear? Screen's got a lot of glare on it, sorry. No fall code. Now we go back to the data stream. Okay, so we've got a different reading there now, 53.5 degrees. That's on the sensor that's, that was fitted in the van already. Right, so we have 54 degrees on that. So what we're gonna do is, every time you trigger the fault off for that, it sort of, it just flatlines it basically. So, ignition off, so we're gonna turn the ignition off now, and then we'll swap the sensor over with the ignition off, put the ignition back on, make sure the fault codes have cleared, and then read the live data. Okay, now we're just gonna take out that screw that's holding in that. Take out this whole sensor. Is the ignition off? Yeah. Yeah. It sure is. It's a bit wet. It's a new sensor, but it doesn't mean that it's working. I'm going to plug that one in now. Let's get this screwed down. So it's obviously been stripped out. You see there. That's why the screw's been moved over. So we're just going to put it back exactly where it was there. Around there. Okay. Now we're going to turn the ignition back on. We've lost communication. Let's go back. You can see there now we've got movement with this other sensor. The sensor is moving. Start the engine. Yep. So that wasn't moving before with the old sensor, it was just staying on 50 degrees. I'm not sure if I showed that on camera, but if not, I can plug it back in and just show you. So I've also noticed here we've got a leak from the seal there on that gasket. We'll, we'll rectify that in a minute if we can. There's a big boost leak there. Okay, so back in the van you can see a little bit the screen a bit better there. So we've got the numbers. These two now are reading sort of close to each other. And we've got 3.1 voltage pull instead of 2.1 or 1.9, that's where it was before. Just close the window in case we're getting any noise on the camera. Wind noise, I'm not sure if you are, but... A little bit of wind there coming through, so we'll just close the window. Um, okay, so let's read if we have any fault codes at the moment. We were cycling the ignition, turbocharger boost sensor, that's the map sensor. Okay, so we'll clear the fault code, we'll just make sure we'll give it a couple of reads again, and we'll have it on a test drive and then re, -re scan it again after that's been done, just to make sure that the fault code hasn't come back. It would have come back before because we were disconnecting it, of course. Okay, so we've tried a couple of different sensors from the van. This is the one we're leaving on. It seems to be working the best. We're going to change the seal on here where we had the leak from. So we've got these O rings here. We're just going to put a new one on. We'll grease that up. So that's it. That's all reconnected back on. Okay, now everything's been fitted, we'll just make sure all the faults have cleared and we will now do a test drive. Okay, so we've just done a little bit of a test drive. We're going to take it a little bit further, but everything looks okay so far. Okay, a couple of miles test drive is all done. No fault codes have returned, so it's all good. So that's it, see you on the next video.